good morning everybody okay i will be taking um the chapter probability from your mathematical methods section um considering that you all have a fair knowledge of probability from your previous classes i'll skip the basics and i will directly move on to probability distribution right <coughs> so to understand probability distribution of a random variable first you need to know what a random variable is right probability distribution just a second okay so like we know a random experiment is an experiment whose exact outcome for any specific performance is unpredictable right so a random variable um is a variable which depends on the result of the random experiment okay so random variable variable is a variable whose result depends on the random experiment experiment right say for example when you roll a die uh you can associate a random variable with it say the number obtained on rolling a fair die that is a random variable associated with the experiment of rolling a die right or say if you toss three coins a random variable might be the number of heads obtained on uh tossing three coins right so these are examples of random random variable any variable that is associated uh, or depends on the result of the random experiment that is a random variable right say for instance we are taking the case of uh rolling a fair die okay in that case let the random variable be number obtained number obtained when rolling a fair die right in this case what we can see is this random variable can take six values right you can get one a two a three four five or a six these six values can be um, obtained uh, by performing the experiment that is this random variable x can take these six values that means uh we can associate a real number with the random variable right say for example let's take the second case say we were tossing three coins tossing three coins if this is the experiment we can associate a random variable say the number of heads obtained the number of heads obtained on tossing three coins so even in this case when you are tossing three coins the number of heads obtained can be zero we might get uh uh three tails right that means zero head we can get one head we can get two head or a maximum of three heads right since we are tossing three coins that means what i mean to say is even this random variable can be associated with a real number right so it can be said that a random variable a random variable is a function which takes which takes real value values which are determined determined by the outcome of a random experiment so now we know what a random variable is and the concept of associating a um real number that is the value the random variables can take now we want to understand what is the probability distribution of a random variable right so probability distribution is a structure which consists of the values the random variables can take that is say x1 x2 x3 dot 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 and 
with it the associated probabilities with which these values can be obtained right say p1 p2 p3 dot dot this structure is called the probability distribution right probability distribution of <coughs> random variable rather discrete probability distribution i would like to say since uh, these are discrete quantities okay not continuous so this structure as i said is the random sorry is the probability distribution of the random variable say for example if we take the case we have just discussed that is we have rolled a fair die and the random variable whose probability distribution we want to find is the number obtained on rolling a fair die right so the fair die can have 1 2 3 4 5 6 and the distinct probabilities with which we can get a 1 is 1 by 6 a 2 is also 1 by 6 1 by 6 1 by 6 1 by 6 and a 1 by 6 right so this structure which consists of the values the variable can the take a variable can take and the associated probabilities this structure is called the probability distribution but not only this structure there is also another um condition that needs to be satisfied that is the distinct probabilities should be greater than 0 and secondly the probability should add up to 1 these are the conditions which needs to be satisfied for the uh, for the structure to be called as a probability distribution so um i would like to repeat once more so that the concept is clear so any for any random experiment we if we associate a random variable with it and if we make the structure where we see the values the random variable can take and the associated probabilities of each value uh following or following these two assumptions that is satisfying these two assumptions that the probabilities will be greater than 1 and on adding up all the probabilities it is equal to 1 if this uh conditions are fulfilled we call it a probability distribution right <clears throat> you need not um Uh, write everything right now because i will provide you with a pdf so please do try to understand okay so um to understand it better we will perf- we will uh, solve a problem so that the concept gets clear right say for example a bag we are trying to solve a problem a bag contains contains four white and six red balls four balls are drawn at random from the bag from the bag find the probability distribution find the probability distribution of the number of the number of white balls drawn okay so we would like to find the probability distribution of the number of white balls drawn <coughs> so the question is itself telling us that the random variable whose distribution we want to find is the number of white balls drawn right so x is a random variable random variable denoting the number of white balls drawn from the bag right so this is a random variable whose distribution we want to find now we need to see what which values this random variable can take since we are drawing four balls at random and we have only four white balls right so there is a possibility that we draw zero white balls 
there is a possibility we draw one white ball there is a possibility we draw two white balls three white balls or a maximum of four white balls because the total number of four white four uh, the total number of white balls avail available is four right so a random variable can take these values so if we want to write the probability distribution it is given by so first we need to write the values the variables can take so the number of white balls drawn can be 1 can be 2 can be sorry 0 1 2 3 and a maximum of 4 it cannot be 5 since we have only 4 white balls so and also we have to draw 4 balls at random so the number cannot be greater than 4 right and now we have to see the associated probabilities with these numbers so if we want to draw uh, so uh, considering that we are drawing zero white balls that means all the balls are red so drawing six balls so drawing four red balls out of ten balls right so this is the probability now if you if your uh, okay probability of drawing one white ball is that means four one out of four into six sorry into three out of six red balls right I hope you all are very well acquainted with this kind of uh, problem so I'm not explaining much over here <coughs> so drawing two white balls is 4 C2 into a 6 C2 divided by 10 C2 right now drawing three white balls is 4 C3 into a 6 C1 divided by 10 C4 and drawing four white balls is you're drawing all the four white balls from the four white balls available and so these are our respective probabilities and you need to and obviously if you add these probabilities you will get a one okay so this is the probability distribution this is how you need to um, solve problems like this okay so now when we uh, know what uh, uh, probability distribution is we need to know the mean and variance of probability distributions right <coughs> So mean of a probability distribution function in general is given by the respective probabilities multiplied by the value the variable can take and its summation right p3 x3 plus dot 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 pn xn divided by p1 plus p2 plus dot 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 pn so you're left out with mu is equal to summation p i x i where i is equal to 1 to n this uh, denominator is equal to 1 so that has vanished right so this is this is the expression of mean of a probability distribution right now we want to see the variance of a probability distribution variance It is known that the definition by definition our variance is given by we know variance is given by this so we are just going to simplify this term right so we have summation pi as well to 1 to n you have a xi square minus 2 xi mu plus a mu square right <clears throat> so we'll take the summation inside so we have pi xi square to 1 to n minus <coughs> the mu comes out summation 2 mu comes out sorry 1 to n xi pi and plus mu square comes out i equal to 1 to n pi right so we are left out with this pi xi square remains as it is um, 2 mu this term is nothing but the mean itself right so you have a mu and plus mu square this term becomes a 1 so 
so pi xi square i equal to 1 to n minus a mu square right so the variance of any probability distribution is given by pi xi square summation of pi xi square minus mu square <clears throat> so since this is the variance of a probability distribution we automatically know the standard deviation the standard deviation is given by sigma that is root over equal to 1 to n pi xi square minus mu square so this is the expression for standard deviation of a probability distribution function okay so um, we will see how to uh, uh, so find out the mean and probability uh, sorry the mean and variance of a function we'll just consider the previous example right so previous example we had considered the number we get in a die right so our x i is could take the values Z, uh, zero sorry it was not the number we can get on a die the example was of uh, okay a bag containing four balls and drawing four balls at random right so our I'm just uh, uh, finding trying to find the mean sorry I'm just trying to find the mean and variance of the previous problem that we have just solved okay so the variable could take values 0 1 2 3 and 4 the respective probabilities were given by the first one was if you complete the calculation over there you will find the first one's value will be 1 by 14 the second one will be 8 by 21 please do complete the previous problem we will end up with these results okay <clears throat> 6 by 14 you have 4 by 35 and 1 by 210 okay So our motto is to find the mean and um, variance. So we need to find the product of um, the respective probabilities and the values. So we need to make a column of pi xi. And to find the standard deviation, we need to make a column of pi xi squared. So pi xi squared. So just multiply these. You will get 0, 8 by 21. <coughs> pixi this is 6 by 7 this is 12 by 35 this is 2 by I don't know, 5 so if you add up this you get summation pixi is equal to you will end up getting 1.6 okay please do the calculation by yourself now we may need to make a column of pixi square so the first term is 0 the second term becomes 8 by 21 the third term becomes uh, 24 by uh, 14 okay the fourth term becomes 36 by 35 because you need to square this square the x size and multiply with pi and the fourth term and fifth term becomes 16 by 210 so if you sum up all these you will end up getting pi x i square is equal to if you add all these you will end up getting 3.2 So the mean mu is equal to summation pi xi and we have got it from the uh, uh, table itself. It is equal to 1.6, right? And uh, our sigma square is given by summation i equal to 1 to n pi xi square minus a mu square. So you get pi xi square is 3.2, 3.2 minus a 1.6 square. So you will end up getting a 0.64 okay so this is the exact way you will have to solve these kind of problems okay i'll be providing a detailed pdf of today's class uh, if you see the pdf you will um, see assignments have been given to you you need to solve the assignment problems and uh, i'll tell you when you need to submit those assignments okay but keep them prepared okay now these uh, now we have only dealt with uh, practical probability distributions but now we'll start to understand what theoretical distributions are okay so theoretical distributions distributions 
uh, now theoretical distributions are probability distributions which are not obtained from observations but rather are mathematically deduced okay theoretical distributions are theoretical distributions are mathematically deduced mathematically deduced based on certain assumptions okay based on certain assumptions so these theoretical uh, distributions are not uh, from direct uh, observations or experiments but are based on mathematical deductions uh, we will be uh, discussing three important theoretical distributions namely binomial distribution binomial distribution distribution poisson distribution distribution and normal distribution uh, now these two are discrete probability distributions whereas normal distribution is a continuous probability distribution okay so we'll come to these later today we will start with binomial distribution binomial distribution <coughs> okay so before starting or before starting to explain i would like you to um, know the definition of a binomial distribution so i'm writing in that writing it for you let p be the probability probability of success of an event okay and q be the probability probability of failure failure of the event okay in such case suppose suppose there are n trials by n trials we mean the experiments are being performed n times okay mm, n trials of the event of the events in a binomial binomial experiment experiment i'll come to this the binomial probability probability distribution is defined by defined by so the values of the variables are 0 1 2 dot dot anything else to n and the probability associated with the um, variables are q to the power n, n c1, q to the power n minus 1 p, this one is n c2, q to the power n minus 2 p square dot dot, the rth term is n c r, q to the power n minus r, p to the power r and the nth term is p to the power n. Okay. <coughs> So this is the definition of a binomial distribution that is when the probability of success is p and when the probability of failure is q and they are constants for a particular trial for the trial they are constant and um, there are n trials the distribution is given by this okay and why it is called a binomial distribution because like you can see each terms are uh, these terms come from the um, from expansion from binomial expansion of the uh, expression this if you expand this binomially you will get this term so that is where the name comes from binomial distribution so when do these uh, binomial distributions occur uh, so certain conditions needs to be fulfilled for binomial distribution to uh, work out okay so the conditions conditions for applying apply applying binomial distributions there are certain conditions which needs to be fulfilled for binomial distribution uh, application the first is the number of trials needs to be fixed that is n the number of trials needs to be fixed and finite okay the second condition is each trial can have only two possibilities each trial 
each trial will have only two possibilities either a success or a failure only these two possibilities uh, uh, each trial can have the trials need to be independent all the trials this in and trials need to be independent the trials need to be independent and the probabilities of success and failure needs to be constant for the trials p or q needs to be constant so what i mean to say is if this conditions are fulfilled that means if a experiment with finite and fixed number of trials is performed where only two possibilities happen either a success or a failure with constant probabilities and the trials are independent of each other if this conditions apply then the binomial distribution can be applied to such variable random variable right um so you will uh, you will have a clear understanding of this as we proceed uh, but first let's try to prove this that the from where this distribution comes okay we need to prove that this distribution originally comes when these kind of conditions apply right <clears throat> so if you want to prove it proof of binomial distribution say the probability of success is given by p right for uh, for each event the probability of success uh, in one trial is p and the probability of failure is q which is basically 1 by p no oh, sorry 1 minus p right now p and q's are constant so if we want to get r success say we are we are considering n number of trials right and we want to get r success so the probability we know from multiplication rule right the multiplication of independent trials we know we can multiply um, each probability so the probability of getting r success in a particular format will definitely be p to the power r and q to the power n minus r right i think it's just simply by applying multiplication theorem of probability r success definitely means n minus r failures so we just need to multiply the terms right <clears throat> now this arrangement now these failures and success can obviously be can arrange among themselves say we are talking about getting four heads and uh, two tails this four heads can arrange themselves in numerous manners right so like you can see there can be numerous arrangements so the number of arrangement is given by ncr so the failures and success can again arrange themselves in ncr ways that means the net probability the net probability of obtaining obtaining r success and obviously n minus r failure is obtained by multiplying these two terms that is ncr p to the power r q to the power n minus r right so like you can see so every term is same as we have just written so the terms are obtained from the binomial expansion of q plus p to the power n so um, it is um named by bin binomial distribution like now only i have said so it is a very simple uh, proof uh, which you get just by applying the multiplication theorem say for example if you want to understand it in a bit more clear manner if you want to understand the proof by an example you can understand say we are tossing a coin <clears throat> we want to toss a coin right if you want to toss a coin and the probability of getting a head is p and probability of getting a tail is q which is basically is equal to 1 minus p right so if we toss a coin one time we can get a tail or a head right so in case we get a tail that means the number of head is obviously zero and we get a head the number of head is one right so if we want to calculate the probability it is q over here and 
P over here. Now say we are going to uh, toss two coins, right? So in that case we can get two tails, one head and one tail or one tail or one head and head. These are the probabilities if we coin, um, if sorry, if we toss, if we toss the coins two times, right? Or if we toss two coins uh, random in a random manner. Uh, so this is the, this is the sample space. So getting two heads, uh, sorry, getting two tails, that means number of head is zero. Getting one head and one tail, that is number of head is one. Getting one tail and one head, number of head is one. And getting two heads, number of head means two, right? So the probability over here is Q, that means one tail into another tail. The probability of over here is PQ and also this is PQ. So ultimately the probability is 2PQ, right? And over here you have PP, that means P square. So you can see these, that means we are getting these three terms. These three terms are obtained from the expansion of P plus Q square, right? Q square, 2PQ, Q square. Similarly, if you go for the third case, if we toss three coins, uh, or if we if we toss the coins three times so how many heads can we get we can get these combinations either three tails or one head two tail one head two tail can be arranged in three manners right this all comprise for one head and two tail now two heads can be arranged in three manners again tail head so over here you get zero head over here you get one head number of heads over here you get two head and three head is possible only in this way so over here you get three head right so if you want to find the probabilities associated with it over here we get a q q and a q that means q cube over here we get a <coughs> q q and a p q q and a p q Q and a P. So over here it is 3Q, sorry, 3PQ square. Over here we similarly if you do we get a 3P square Q and this comes up to Q cube, right? So like again we can see the these all the terms are nothing but they are the expansion uh, terms of the um, of the expression P plus Q to the power 3. That means what I mean to say is if the above conditions which we have now said satisfy the probability distribution is given by the expansion terms of these uh, p plus q to the power n um, expression and that is why it is called the binomial distribution right. So I will just wrap up today's class uh, by solving a very simple problem so that you can understand uh, so that your understanding gets a bit more clear say for example find the probability of getting four heads in six tosses of a fair coin so we want to find the probability of getting four heads in uh, six tosses of a fair coin right so in each toss the probability of getting a head is 1 by 2 and the probability of getting a tail is 1 by 2 right now obviously we know these probabilities are constant the number of tosses like it has over here it is 6 so it is finite so our purpose our conditions are being fulfilled now we want to get <coughs> the probability of getting four heads right so our r is equal to 4 that is success is 4 uh, so now from just from the distribution we can find out the probability that is ncr q to the power n minus r p to the power r and it ends up to 6 c4 q means uh, half to the power 6 minus 4 and half to the power 4 so this gives you the answer of the probability of getting four heads in six tosses of a fair coin right so i'll end up today's class over here please do practice uh, problems and uh, do complete the assignment and i'll let you know when you need to submit it right thank you